Helicopters and donkeys are once again carrying ballots to polling stations right across Afghanistan. Another presidential election will be held in less than two weeks from now. The last one in August was something of a joke internationally. There was a lot of fraud, blatant. It was embarrassing for the West, especially after eight years of war, the loss of more than a thousand NATO troops and billions of dollars in aid money being poured into the country. Steve Sadman joins us on this. Steve, a lot of people out there wondering if this one's going to be any different than the last one. I guess, though, this is the best option out of a series of bad options on the table. Well, if you want to build a, a political system, you've got to have to have institutions actually matter. And so the institutions in this case said that if there's a vote where the winner is under 50 percent, you have a runoff. And so they're following the rules. The only way we'll be able to get to people actually respecting the institutions is if you, is if you actually follow the rules again and again and again until people actually expect that rules to matter. The last time an election was held, it took months to get all those ballots out. There was a lot of security that had to go around the country. Uh, is this even feasible to do in, in two weeks? I mean, that's not a lot of time. It's not a lot of time. I, I, it's unclear as to how they get everything done, but it looks like they're going to give it a shot. And I guess more importantly, is it actually going to make any difference, do you think? I mean, I mean, regardless of who wins, people are saying it looks like it's going to be Hamid Karzai, mm -hmm. the current president. Do you think it's going to make any difference? Well, I think it does make a difference because, again, uh, if you don't follow the rules, you can't expect the rules to matter anywhere. And, and the part of the counterinsurgency effort, the war, is about developing a governance, developing a government that people respect that is legitimate. And given that how bad the outcomes were in August, uh, to have another try at it to actually try to do it better and to follow the rules of the system is a way to push things forward and to give some legitimacy to the government. Even if it's Karzai, it will make him uh, have more legitimacy domestically and internationally. We're seeing pictures of Karzai and also uh, his, his main rival, Abdullah Abdullah. What's your take on the White House and which way the mm -hmm. White House is leaning in terms of sending mm -hmm. those troops? Obama's still thinking about it, not sure how many to send. What do you think? Well, I think in the end he's going to come close to McChrystal's number. I, I think that uh, he committed himself last March to trying to give this a real shot, that uh, thus far there's been a lot of um, a wasted effort, a, a poor strategy, and, and McChrystal has the right idea this time. The question is, is whether it's too late in the game to do it, but I think Obama is going to have to give it at least one shot of, of, of giving the reinforcements that might lead to a better outcome. What about the idea of power sharing between mm -hmm. these two guys? Uh, there's talk about not having an election at all, getting these two, uh, Karzai and Abdullah Abdullah, to sort of come together to some kind of a deal uh, in which they would run the Afghan government together. Well, that's uh, something that's been uh, sort of an easy solution to think about, but it's really hard to do in practice because there are no rules that, for who is the number two guy in power. There's no uh, institutions, there's no, uh, there's no seat at the table, there's, there's, there's no way to actually do it without making the rules on the fly. And again, if you want to build a political system where the people actually respect the institutions, whether that's the presidency or the local police, anywhere in between, if people are making rules on the fly, then that's really not going to help do a lot to try to create long-lasting things that aren't based on personalities, but based on actual institutions. You know, just talking to people out there, uh, friends of mine anecdotally, a lot of people are, are getting tired of this. Uh, they're just saying, you know, all of the dead soldiers, mm -hmm. Canada's lost 125 uh, soldiers, mm -hmm. all of the money, the billions mm -hmm. that's been poured into this country, all the focus that's been on Afghanistan mm -hmm. uh, since 9-11, for what? Well, that's a good question, and, and it's something we all have to take very seriously. But uh, if you, the first thing is, is that we've only really been at it for a couple of years, not, not for the entire eight years, in terms of trying to really build an Afghan government and, and helping it go along. The other thing is that uh, the real question is, are the lives of Afghanis better now than they were 10 years ago? And the answer to that is yes. If you take a look at refugee returns, it used to be there were millions of people hanging out on the border of Pakistan. Now they live in Kabul, Kandahar, and elsewhere. And uh, so the lives have improved. There's lots of statistics that you can ask uh, the Canadian government for in terms of uh, infant mortality, life expectancy, all those kinds of things. They're all better than they used to be. It's not Canada. It's not Norway. It's not someplace that we'd like to live. Uh, but then we wouldn't have to do that if they were that. We wouldn't have to be there if they were already at that level of uh, development. All right, Steve. Thanks very much. Sure.